I have to be honest, Fort fam. I'm always a sucker for a good puzzle game, and although I hadn't had the opportunity to hop in and play this next game when it first released, its availability on Xbox Game Pass and its winning of Independent Game of the Year had me curious enough to give it a try. I'll say that the puzzles and layering of this game didn't disappoint, and I'll gladly say it's probably one of my most seamless experiences in this genre. That being said, I have a few gripes that I'd like to bring up, as it's not without its faults. Hi, my name's Lil, and this is my review of Cocoon. If you haven't heard of this one yet, I'd be a bit shocked, but to fill you in, it's a puzzle adventure game all about jumping into one world just to solve a puzzle in another. I'm not actually teasing here either. The amount of orbception this game has and the many different layers to the puzzles in it is impressive. Most games in this genre offer a couple multi-step process puzzles that leave you racking your brain for an answer that was staring you right in the face. Cocoon is no different, but instead of three to five step processes, sometimes there were as many as seven and oftentimes they involved multiple dimensions within themselves. That sounds confusing, and ultimately, it is. My biggest tip for anyone taking on this game is to consider every angle. It's likely that if you're missing something, it just requires a little reimagining and rearranging to solve it. Despite how complex some of the puzzles are, I have to say Cocoon did a great job of limiting the amount of time you're running around looking for some answer that's not there to begin with. Most games will let you wander freely, lost inside your brain for hours, but this one oftentimes locked you in and left you with a couple pieces to put together, free of the map pacing stress. Instead of feeling like you missed something in a zone from 20 minutes ago, you have the safety of knowing that when a door closes behind you, you're good to keep moving forward and the answer is absolutely right in front of you. This seemingly simple yet incredible design is what made Cocoon easily my best experience in a puzzle game. I played Planet of Lana earlier this year and it hails in comparison to this masterpiece. A game that can layer puzzles inside themselves and challenge your brain to quite literally think outside the orb and the other orb and the other orb. So much so that to one point you have four dimensions inside of each other is impressive. To do that while keeping you penned into a smaller space so you don't feel lost and confused as to where you should even be, well, only adds to its beauty. The thing that rounds it all out is the eerie sci-fi soundtrack that did a great job of adding in that otherworldly feel to the game. It was obvious the entire time that something bigger was going on, and I won't spoil the ending in any way, but my hunch was correct. With all my praise for the game out of the way, I need to bring up some glaring points about this game. The biggest for me was the bosses. Now, the bosses are all pretty much the exact same. Perform a set of dodges, grab an item that hits the boss, and do it again. Each of them had four stages, and each time it felt the same. They're easy patterns to get the hang of, but ultimately it can get frustratingly annoying with a controller. When you get later into the game, you'll have to aim at some moving triangles and hit them with your beam of light. It was exceptionally easy with some practice, but I found it annoying that the controller hard locked me into a clock-like figure with set points. I can understand that it's easier for newer fans of the genre or non-hardcore gamers, but I'm a mouse and keyboard player and love my movements feeling free. So while this is a small complaint to some, for me, it made each interaction with this end game mechanic frustrating. I also want to complain about the lack of context to anything. In Planet of Lana, there wasn't any real speaking, but the entire context of the game was clear as day with the cinematic cutscenes and the dramatic moments. I really wanted that in Cocoon. For me, I can't even come close to calling it Indie Game of the Year due to the fact that while the puzzles are absolutely mind-blowing and the game is good, it lacks anything but that. I wanted longer, dramatic scenes of this world that would give me some ideas to what I was doing. But honestly, I just felt like I was a little bug creature running around and solving puzzles and occasionally pissing off some bigger bug creature and moving on to a new zone. It became exceptionally repetitive, and while the puzzles changed and evolved with time, keeping the gameplay interesting, the story and the plot could have used a whole lot of work. The ending is cool, but I sat there going, oh, that's what I was doing, with a question mark blinking over my head. There are small complaints, but I'm definitely a lot more confused as to its winning of Indie Game of the Year after playing all the way through. Regardless of my gripes, this game is still getting awarded with our resounding Pillow Fort stamp of approval. For fans of the puzzle genre, this one is a must-play. You truly can't find such a well-woven web of scenarios to figure out in any game that I've played at least. And I've played a few attempting this layers within layers approach to the puzzle genre lately, and all of those attempts have fallen drastically short of what Cocoon has achieved. Tell us your own thoughts on the game below, and don't forget to leave the video a like before you go. You can find the link to my full playthrough in the description, and make sure you subscribe as we're constantly featuring new games and it's the best way to support creators at the low cost of $0. Thanks as always for watching, and until next time.